All right, Year 6. Uh, the third uh, folder or the third item we have in our writing folder is this one down here, the creative writing. So um, this is the writing task. We try to practice writing every day, something uh, with a bit of creativity. Let's have a bit of fun with writing and to experiment with a few things. So we're just going to read the, the instructions here, creative writing. Your task is to compose a descriptive paragraph made up of six sentences at, at the most. Each day of the week, add a sentence with the emphasis on one of your senses. Sight, smell, touch, taste and hearing. Um, for example, on Monday you might write about how the scene looks, then on the following days you might describe the sounds, the scent or smell or the temperature of the scene, and then on the last day add a, add a sentence about uh, the actual emotion of the, of the scene. Uh, this week we've got something, a uh, castle in the ruins, so you know it might be a bit scary, um, it might be a bit sad because of the mist and that the ruins of the castle you know, look in a, in a bit of a sad state. Anyway, so one sentence per day adds up to a good-sized paragraph by the end of the week. Uh, now remember, the aim here is to write creatively and descriptively with correct sentence structure. Now what do I mean by correct sentence structure? Um, basically, a sentence is broken into two parts. The subject, okay, the thing that you're writing about, and the action, all right, which involves a verb, okay? Uh, so you need to make sure that the character or the thing that you're writing about is performing something or carrying out some sort of action, okay? So the subject, otherwise known as the noun, and the verb part, which is often referred to as the predicate, the action that's taking place in the sentence. Now, as I also said, we want to be writing creatively, okay? So that means that in front of each noun, you've got to have at least one or two adjectives, something to give us a better description of the subject and each verb, the action that's going on, needs to have one or two adverbs either in front or behind the verb. Okay, so if you click on Castle Ruins in the Mist, you'll end up with this. Okay, now I've already hit Tools, I've saved, actually downloaded that document, Castle Ruins in the Mist. Okay, download it to your computer, okay, or your tablet, okay, and then you'll be able to open it in your tablet as a PDF. Okay, and then you hit on, hit the button on tools and hit fill in and sign. Okay, so I'm just going to enlarge this. All right, we'll zoom in a bit here. Um, try and keeping, trying to keep an eye on, on the picture so that we can actually come up with something. And today we're going to talk about how it looks. Now, if you're unlucky enough to be in my class here at school, you know that there are certain rules uh, for Mr. McIntyre's creative writing, and that is the first sentence of the paragraph. You're not allowed for it to begin with the word the, or the letter A, or as, or an. Ideally, we want to start with an adjective or an adverb. Okay, so I'm going to take you through that process now, um, completely off the cuff. What I want to talk about is how the ruins. Um, are emerging from from the mist okay so um, this is where you'll need your thesaurus because you want to come up with some words now the way to do this of course is just come up with a basic sentence and then we're going to edit as we go so when I first write the sentence I might start for my very first draft start with the word the the castle ruins um, were situated a pretty boring sentence at the moment situated on top of a hill which was above a valley that was covered in mist okay so there we have a pretty simple sentence uh, it's pretty boring nothing really exceptional about this sentence here. Um, it's the sort of thing you might expect from people that just want to write simply and that's okay. However, the task here of course is to try and write with a bit of creativity, a bit of description and write in a way that's going to paint a picture in the reader's head. So this sentence here 
is a tell. It just tells you what, what, what the picture is. We want to show, we want to be able to get the reader to, without looking at the picture, get an idea of what they're actually seeing, sort of get their imagination running. So, first of all, I want to get rid of the word the, okay? Um, so, basically what I want to head, to head towards is what are the castle ruins actually doing? Well, first of all, they're standing, okay? Castle ruins stand, um, they stand on the ground, um, uh, the towers reach for the sky, anything like that. Okay, so I might start, instead of saying situated on top of a hill, which is just a factual statement, nothing wrong with that, but not very imaginative, I might uh, use a different word for situated on top of the hill. And as I said, the castle ruins there are standing on top of the hill. Okay, so standing on a hill is fine, but we can have a bit more... Uh, a bit more description here. Here we have standing as a verb. Standing high oops, on a hill. Okay. And if I have a look at the rest of this picture, yeah, I don't know. They look like buildings down here. Maybe this is a village or maybe they are just trees. Um, this whole area, of course, is a valley. Okay. So I'm going to, standing high on a hill, over looking because that's what they're doing they're looking over overlooking a uh, valley covered in mist well if i use my thesaurus um i might use instead of, instead of covered which is yeah once again a pretty true word but not really imaginative or romantic in any way um standing high on a hill overlooking uh a uh mist oops mist shrouded valley um, then I can come back to the the word the and move it away from the start the um, castle ruins well let's get a bit more description into castle ruins how about the ancient and crumbling Castle ruins. Um, the ancient and crumbling castle ruins. What are they doing? Where they're standing? Uh, how about I just say reached for the reached for the clouds or something along those lines? Okay. Reached for the clouds. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. I might say something a bit different, considering it's a castle. We think of castles of knights and wars and medieval times. How about we uh, think of something that you do with a castle uh, or a castle is a place of sanctuary or where the army was held. So we're going to say uh, guarded, the ancient and crumbling castle ruins guarded the, um, uh, guarded the surrounding, how about, uh, territory or something like that okay nice and simple uh, to start with and then we've just embellished it a little bit okay and that's what we can see standing high on a hill overlooking a misshrouded valley the ancient and crumbling ruins or castle ruins guarded the surrounding ooh, territory how about we uh how about we just not be too silly and just use a, a basic word that we can that we're probably familiar with guarded the surrounding countryside. So that's what we see. Okay, tomorrow, um, you know, you're going to add uh, another sentence, hopefully with as many um, adjectives and, and adverbs, uh, your adjectives in front of your nouns, your adverbs either side of your verbs. Okay, so standing is my verb, high on a hill is my adverb, okay, or my adverbial group, as it were. Okay, uh, a valley is a noun, yes. Um, Mishrouded is my, are my adjectives in front of valley. Uh, castle ruins uh, the, um, is, the, is the, uh, the noun group. And here we have ancient and crumbling adjectives. Ooh. Guarded is a verb, we can put something here. How about silently? 
guarded the uh, surrounding countryside. So we can add quite a few um, adjectives, and this is just my oh, adjectives, and I should say descriptive language, and this is just my think aloud when I try to write creatively. Start with something true, something simple, okay? The castle ruins, there we go. That's a pretty simple, accurate description of what you see in the picture, and then I go to embellish it, okay? I go and change the words around a little bit and learn to write a bit creatively. Now, once you try this a couple of times, you'll see how easy it is and particularly when you're writing stories or any sort of writing, once you start putting uh, these descriptive words in, you'll find that it's much easier to get uh, to go from a C in your writing up to a B and an A, because we want to see these descriptions. And of course, my sentence makes sense. Everything is in past tense. Okay, shrouded, guarded. Okay, that's all in past tense. So you've got to make sure you're writing either in past tense or present tense. Okay, um, so make sure those are right. If I want to change it to uh, present tense, standing high on a hill overlooking um, a misshrouded valley, the ancient crumbling castle ruins, guard. Okay, if I take out guard, the surrounding countryside, that turns that into present tense. What I have to do for the rest of my paragraph, of course, is to make sure every sentence then is present tense. Mr. McIntyre, he likes to write in past tense, so I'm going to keep the whole lot in past tense. So make sure you keep an eye on that as the week goes on. Okay, um, come with a few more of your own examples. Tomorrow, work on what you might hear. Um, you might not have too much for smell because um, it might be too cold. Um, and there might only be the occasional bird sound or something like that in the scene. So... Uh, that, that might be all you might hear, or you might even hear a faint breeze, who knows. So think about these for your, your next couple of, of sentences. Um, and then also talk about uh, what sort of emotion this picture makes you, you feel. Um, does it make you feel a sense of um, broodingness or something scary? Or do you think it's sad because the castle ruins themselves, uh, you know, old and broken down and that sort of thing. Either way, have a crack, all right? and enjoy writing for a bit of creativity.